When we push the boat off the trailer in the morning and I'm fishing with Captain Ryan Lambert from Cajun Fishing Adventures, I know we're going to win. It's, it's, it's like, okay, well, I got Michael Jordan on the boat today. We're, gonna, we're probably gonna put up a lot of big numbers. Back in the day, both Ryan and I were competitors where we competed against each other. But we had a common friend named Ray Stansberry that Ryan fished with quite a bit. And for a period of time, Ray was actually the lodge manager out here. And that's what really molded us together is the fact that the three of us knew each other. And I've been here now for 10 years. We don't even talk about tournament fishing anymore. Now it's all about guiding. It's all about clients. It's all about the fish. We should, you know, have our opportunities to sight fish, but I think we're going to pick up quite a few of them just covering water with these Miradine XLs. The clouds are going to allow us to throw. And I, I mean, when you're throwing mirror lures with the inline hooks, I think we're going to surprise people how, how efficient they are moving through this grass and how the fish respond, because right now we're fishing the ponds closest to the gulf. So there's pogies and mullet all in these ponds. So we're matching the hatch, if you will. And there's big, big fish out here too. You know, you get Giant bulls. Giant fish. Talk about CA a little bit. Oh my God. How'd you come into contact with him? You know, w one year when I totally lost my mind, I was talking to the fish in the redfish circuit. And I did that, and that's how I met all these guys from Florida, you know, the CA and, and Greg and just the whole guys. And it's like a big fraternity. I mean, so so they start, they were coming out here in the summer anytime and said, guys, come stay at the lodge and, you know, bring your customers here. It's a win-win for me. It's a win-win for them. And, and I mean, there's a waiting list for those Florida guys to bring their people here in the summer because people never seen the kind of fish. And CA is a top-notch guy. I mean, he's a professional at what he does. His show is great. It's a, it's a pleasure to have him around. It's good for my lodge, actually. There we go. Those two, looking straight into there the There we go. That thing finds a fish. Find it on the outside. Finds a, finds a fish when you, when you can't do it with anything else. It's just amazing. He smashed it, too. Yeah, he did. So much for me waiting for <laughs> I was gonna bring that to your attention. I can't help it. I, I was gonna bring that to your it's attention. It's a testosterone thing. <laughs> I thought about it when he hit us. I said, one, one, two, now if we hit him. <laughs> Yo, low country boil. He looks like a low country boil itself. He's so pretty and red. Mm -hmm. Lit up in here. You know, hard bait fishing is not what you think about. When you fish here in Louisiana, you're always thinking, got to use soft plastics, got to use blade baits, you know, and that's something that we always do here, but hard baits can definitely catch fish. Well, I love fishing them, but not with customers. Yeah. Because <laughs> you will wear one. Yeah. Well, that's, why, that's why that net's coming out right now. You just scrap, are you ready? Yep. Here he comes. Look how gorgeous that fish is. Pros About pointer. matches the bait. <laughs> I mean, he matches the bait. Oh, yes. <laughs> Perfect. Them hooks just fall right out, but they grab, boy. That's what's good about those inline hooks. That they will is grab just a fish. such a fat fish. They got pretty, too, huh? Boy, that one you caught the other day, that nine pound, 27 yeah. inch. That match my shirt. That was a stud, boy. Yeah, that was a great photo. That match my shirt. You explain to him how lucky he is. Yeah. <laughs> You're lucky that you got a Floridian in the boat looking out for you because <laughs> them Cajuns put you in the box. Yeah, in a heartbeat. <laughs> you ever heard of Redfish Ryan, Muddy? <laughs> yeah. It's not a good place. Not a good place. You want to catch one, brother? No, you keep on going. We're going to go right down this thing. You keep wearing them out, man. I want you just to saw your way down too. this flat. He smashed it.
Kite fishing has always been one of those things that measures anglers. Recognize with your eyes where the fish is, where he's going, and then hand-eye coordination where you can drive a cast to a spot ahead of that fish so that everything meets at the same time. And that is almost like a drug. That's what gets us all invested in sight fishing. What I like to do is especially fishing, you know, sight fishing, fly fishing, going after them with a certain bait like we did today. We went after them specifically with the Meridine. We wanted to use Merlo products today, and we were gonna stick with that, that program, and we made it happen. We said, okay, let's go to section D, and uh, they'll be there. I promise they'll be here. This is one of my little honey holes, and sure enough, it was on. Fish at 11 o'clock, 25 to 30 feet. See him? Mm -hmm. This is real. There you go. Man, you, hard to train a guy like you who likes to bass fish. You got him. <laughs> you got him. I think he's got me. Well, I tell you, when they get in this stuff like this, it don't take a well, you're giving them. Great fishermen to get them. Give them a little low country boil there. You can't gonna pull you up on them. That was a smart move there, pulling that rod back to the right. She was about to take you around some stuff. Not bad for my first time, huh? Yeah, not bad. <laughs> you saw the video and everything. Yeah, I've been watching Flats Class TV. <laughs> <laughs> that old CA, he'll tell you how to do it now. You got one of the best shows out, brother. Yeah. The only one that even compares to your show is the, you know, Walker's K that Flip used to do. Oh boy. You know, that's, that was a great show as well. That was the thing that got us all inspired to do this. Well, show. that and American Sportsman back in the day when it was so good with Bing Crosby and, and all those guys, man. Oh, was... I loved it when Bert was hosting it. And this is a really good looking fish too. This is a nice fish. I'm going to move my, my Yeti. up there like that. I don't want to give you any ideas about putting them in there. <laughs> you smell the smoke redfish dip right now. Wow. Do you know who I am? Look real good. <laughs> Not many survived this. I want you to just count your blessings and get on your fins tonight and say a special prayer because you could have been redfish dip. <laughs>
<laughs> Get ready, he's fixing to go the other way on you. At a rapid rate of speed, I might add. Well, let's oh, do it. Big, bigger one behind here. Get another rod. <laughs> <laughs> I will. There's an old adage in fishing that says 90% of the fish are in 10% of the water. And even here in Louisiana, that holds true most days. You have to understand which way the water flows, why the fish are set up in a certain zone. And for me, it's always about current, bait, and structure. If you have those three things, you have redfish. There are other things I look for too. I look for stingrays, I look for sheep's head, I look for black drum, I look for crabs themselves in the water. Those are the signature spots that will allow you to say, redfish are here somewhere. Oh, you gotta love it, little brother. <laughs> I love this. I'm right there with this one. I just got, I got a higher power braid on, so I'm gonna win if they get together. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> I'm oh. cheating. Oh, they fighting well, huh? Oh, man. Look how pretty that is. Nice, cool water. Ate that Meridine like, <laughs> oh my gosh. This is a 12 to 25 pound casting rod. I mean, it's a stick. I think you got beaver, I got Wally right here. The good thing is the rest of the class is right behind. Come on. Don't give up now, brother. That's the meathead right there. Boy. <laughs> That's how you do it. It's pretty red. You notice every time that me and you get a double, you have the biggest one? Well. I think I got the reward because I've been on the back of that boat all day. I know, I tried, I tried it. <laughs> all right, let me let him go. All right, you gonna go? He's ready, he's dumping me. <laughs> there he goes. Whoa, he's ready too. That was pretty, that was nice. It is absolutely Redfish Junction right here. I know you're dying to know what we were using on the boat today, especially shooting in Louisiana, throwing hard baits, which is something that is kind of out of the ordinary for most. But what we used today was a seven foot four medium heavy action. This is the Falcon uh, Clearwater Rod. Uh, we mated that up with a 4000 Shimano CI4 that was packed with 15 pound Power Pro braid. I had a short, uh, 20 to 24 inch section of 40 pound monofilament leader, believe it or not. And tied to that was the star, which was the Low Country Boil Miradine XL. You'll notice that we, on, on this particular bait, we have inline hooks. The inline hooks are critical. Inline hooks give you that advantage of being able to pull on the fish a lot harder, move it through the grass without fouling the plug, you know, more than half the time. So. The key here is to use extra tough, or what I would call two or three X strong split rings. So the, the low country boil was the rod and reel setup that uh, Captain Ryan Lambert was using. And then I was at the back of the boat picking my shots when I could. I have a Shimano Curato 200 XG here packed with 30 pound power pro braid. This is on an old falcon rod that I really like. This is the old Carolina Lizard Dragger. Uh, it's, a, it's a 12 to 25 pound rod. It's kind of a heavy action rod. It's seven foot long. I was, I was throwing a short leader, maybe a foot, and I was using what we call the uh, Redneck Margarita. This is a Miradine XL, and I actually had three aught inline hooks. Where Ryan was using the two aught, I was using the three aught to give me more of a bite on the fish. Uh, great setup here, very visible bait in the stained off color water, but still tricks the fish in the clear water. Just these little tips that we gave you in the boat about being able to suspend the plug in front of the fish, almost like a suspending spoon, 
they will make a huge difference in your success when you're targeting redfish in the marsh. So I hope this little tackle tip will put a lot more fish in your boat the next time you come out and visit Louisiana. consummate professional you know he knows what he's doing he doesn't get a chance to fish as often because he's always got that pole in his hand so when we get together just like on that last fish see get that one you know i mean it, that was as pretty a take as you ever want to get and that's what makes it when when two guys get together like that and we could call a fish and say you get that one and watch that take i mean that's what it's all about to me is, is watching that and feeling that hit right there come on get it get it here he comes. Oh, get him! <laughs> Good one, buddy. Yeah, that was beautiful. Wanted a margarita. Man, that was pretty. Gosh. Margarita to go. That was nice. Oh, he's trying to get me under that boat. Man, that was pretty as it gets. That. He saw it and came up. Oh, go. I think that one sends us back to Cajun Adventures. <laughs> yeah, I so said. Good Lord. Let my man get that one. We had a bird's eye view on that one, didn't we, bud? Yeah, we did. We got to watch that one happen. Beautiful fish. I mean, beautiful. Man, look he how shotgun that, that Man, margarita. Gorgeous fish too. Shotgunned it. Whew. Look at that fish, buddy. Ryan, I'm ready for some barbecue shrimp, dude. <laughs> Another great Cajun fishing adventure. <laughs> that was a lot of fun today. Cajun fishing adventures. Built it in 1999. <laughs> Everybody thought it was crazy. What are you doing? Building a place like that down here with all, all these hurricanes and all. And you know, I was guiding with myself and maybe one or two other guys were helping me out. I had no idea what it was gonna grow into. I mean, it's just, it's just an all-inclusive, just come home and be part of the family. Everyone that comes here, you know, you feel at home. I have great guides, I have 12 fishing guides, seven duck guides, and we get it done. Legassi, Legassi, Legassi. Legassi. Little granulated garlic. Feel like Justin Wilson. Get it all. All I'm doing is putting some color on these shrimp. I'm not really cooking them. Then okay. we're gonna take them out. Okay. And then we're gonna put beer, Worcestershire sauce. We're gonna take all the shrimp out. Uh-huh. And then we'll put them back in after we make the... Roux? Not really a roux, really but it's, roux. it's a gravy. One of the highlights of coming here for a lot of people is when the shrimp season's open, we can go right across the street. They got a hundred shrimp boats there. They got the shrimp dock. We get these big old fresh Louisiana shrimp and we do a thing called New Orleans barbecue shrimp. And it is so good. I mean, that's, to me, that's how I like to eat shrimp and I eat shrimp every night. Then you take a beer like, like a Texas beer or something that you really don't want to drink. You don't want to really drink. Yeah, you don't really want to drink it. Just... You know we're going to lose every Texas family ever had. <laughs> we're just right. kidding. We'll drink it. Don't worry. Yeah. Ryan usually shows up every summer because he's working here a couple of days a week. And he'll make a dish called barbecue shrimp. And it is lights out a heart attack meal. Butter, half and half, you know, garlic, giant shrimp. It's just, it's something... French bread, you just can't get away from it. You know, you don't want to hurry this part because you want that that kind of a thick, nice little... Because once you put the shrimp back in, a lot of moisture comes out those shrimp and it'll, 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 it'll thin it out too much. So I like to reduce this pretty good. It's what's good about Louisiana. You know, you want shrimp, crabs, oysters, it's right across the street, everything's right off the boat. Yeah, I can't live here. <laughs> you almost do. I wouldn't be able to see my shoes. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Your shoes are 
It's all right. I can't see it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put the shrimp back in before I put the, the half and half just to cool it down a little bit so it doesn't curdle up. All day long, I'm thinking. This is going to be cool because the fire disc group is still here. And we have a perfect opportunity to, to bring everyone together and not just my clients, but Greg's clients and the other clients that were at the lodge that were fishing with other guides. And when you put Ryan in front of a fire disc with a bunch of barbecue shrimp where he can have a little fun, well, it's magic. So evidently we don't measure this. We yeah, I did. I measured it exact. Time. I always measure exact. Mm -hmm. I'm a dump cook. Yeah. Now. Now, put in the special sauce. All right. Barbecue shrimp seasoning, okay. but I put lemon and pepper, fire disc seafood sauce in it. We'll get that boiling, then we're gonna put the butter and emulsify it in there. It's gonna be rocking on ready. Doesn't take long. The shrimp cook really, really fast. And look, we just put a little, 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 little bit of just butter. Just a itty bit. Yeah, just butter. a tiny bit. Then just let it emulsify in there and get in that gravy. <laughs> That's about it, boys and girls. They're ready to eat.